Hello, today we're going to hear the story of Salmon for Simon by Betty Waterton and Ann Blades. A Salmon for Simon. All summer, Simon had been fishing for a salmon. It's the king of the fishes, he told his sisters. We know, they said. That's why great-grandmother calls it Sagai. When Salmon was little, his sisters had taught him how to catch minnows with a strainer. But this year, his father had given him a fishing pole of his own, and he had been fishing every day. He hadn't caught a single salmon. Now it was September. It was the time of year when many salmon were swimming past the island where Simon lived, near the west coast of Canada. So that's not terribly far from where we're at. We're on the west coast. They were returning from the sea, looking for the rivers and streams where they had been born. There they would lay their eggs so that more salmon could be born. Returning to those home streams. One day when the tide was on its way out, Simon and his sisters went clam digging. When their pail was full, his sisters took the clams home to their mother to cook for supper, but Simon stayed on the beach. He had his fishing pole with him as he had every day that summer. I'm going to stay and fish for salmon, he said, and he did. He sat on a rock and fished. He sat on a dock and fished, but he didn't even see a salmon. That's a picture of them clam digging. Have you ever been clam digging before? He saw red and purple starfish sticking to the rocks. He saw green, small green crabs scuttling among the seaweed. He saw flat white sand dollars lying on the wet sand. He saw pink sea anemones waving, pale jellyfish floating, and shiners swimming. Shiners. But he didn't see a salmon. Are they ever hard to catch, thought Simon. He decided to stop fishing, maybe forever. Mm. Looks like he's feeling a little frustrated. He's been trying so hard, kind of disappointing. You try really hard, you know, and it doesn't happen for you right away. Simon walked back along the beach to the place where he and his sisters had been clam digging. The sea water had oozed up from the bottom of the hole and filled it. Some seagulls sat beside it. When Simon, when Simon came near, they flew up into the air crying, Kerr, kerr, kerr. I'm not good at catching salmon, but I am a good clam digger, thought Simon. He dug a few clams and put them on a nearby rock. The gulls flew down, picked up the clams in their beaks, carried them into the air, and then dropped them. The clams hit the rocks, and the shells broke open. Simon listened to the bang, bang, pop as they shattered. He watched the gulls fly down and eat the soft clam meat. He's helping the birds get something to eat. Then Simon heard something different, something that sounded like flap, flap, flap. What's that? He cried, but nobody answered. He heard it again, flap, flap, flap. And this time the sound was right above his head. Kerr, kerr, shrieked the seagulls flying off. Simon looked up and there, not very high above him, was an eagle. Its strong black wings beat the air as it climbed toward the treetops. Simon had often seen bald eagles, but this one was different, for it was carrying something in its talons, something that glistened. A fish, cried Simon. He's got a fish. I see Simon below there. What kind of fish is it? He was so excited that he began hopping about and flapping his arms like eagle wings. The seagulls were excited too, and they circled overhead, screeching. In all the stir and confusion, the eagle dropped the fish down. It came out of the sky. The eagle's like, what is going on? That kid is yelling and screaming. The birds are everywhere. Down, 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 splat, splash into the clam hole. The fish lay on its side in the shallow water and did not move. Salmon ran, Simon ran over. It's dead, he cried. But just then the fish flipped its tail and flipped over. Its gills opened and closed and its fin began to move slowly. It's alive, shouted Simon. Then he looked closer. His eyes grew round. It's alive and it's a salmon. This must be the most beautiful fish in the whole world, he thought. For it was a coho, a silver salmon that had come from far out in the Pacific Ocean to find the stream where it had been born. It had grown big in the ocean and strong. 
ho-ho salmon. All summer, Simon had been waiting to catch just such a fish, and here was one right in front of him. Yet, he didn't feel happy. He watched the big, handsome fish pushing its nose against the gravelly sides of the clam hole, trying to find a way out, and he felt sorry for it. He knew if it would die, he knew it would die if it didn't have enough water to swim in. So Simon wanted the salmon to be safe in the sea where it could swim and leap and dive. He didn't know how he was going to save the salmon, but he had to find a way. I won't let you die, Sockeye, said Simon. Simon thought of carrying the fish to the sea, but he knew it was too big and heavy and too slippery for him to pick up. So we know that they get pretty big, pretty heavy. So for a kid to lift like a big salmon that far... Hmm. He thought about waiting for the tide to come in, but he knew the salmon couldn't wait that long. He looked up at the circling seagulls, but all they said was, Kerr, kerr. Then he looked around and Simon noticed his clam shovel. An idea popped into his head. What is he going to do with his shovel? He would dig a channel for the salmon to swim down to the sea. That was what he had to do. Simon began to dig. The wet sand was heavy. He dug and dug. After a while, he stopped and looked to see how far he had gone. But he had not gone very far at all. He kept on digging. His mother called him in for supper, but he couldn't go because he hadn't finished yet. The salmon was lying quietly now in the shallow water waiting. The salmon can't be there too long. Might get too warm for it. Not enough water. Oof. The sun dipped low in the sky and the air became cool. Simon's hands were red when he was, and he was getting a blister, but he kept on digging. Oh. At last, just when he thought he couldn't lift another shovel full of sand, he looked up and there he was at the sea. The channel was finished. Cold sea water flowed into the pool where the salmon felt the freshness of the sea and it began to move again. Its nose found the opening to salmon's channel and slowly, slowly the salmon began to swim down it. Down, down the channel it swam. At last it reached the open sea. The salmon dived deep into the cool water and then, gleaming in the last rays of the setting sun, it suddenly gave a great leap into the air and it seemed to Simon that the salmon flickered its tail as if to say thank you before it disappeared beneath the waves. Goodbye, Sakai, said Simon. The salmon was free at last. Soon it would be in the deep, secret places of the sea. Now the sun had set and a chilly wind was starting to blow. Simon's, ha Simon's hands were sore and his feet were cold, but he felt warm inside. He picked up his fishing pole and his shovel and started for home. He knew that his house would be bright and cheery inside because lamplight shone golden through the windows. And he knew that it would be nice and warm because he could see smoke curling out of the chimney. And he knew that something good was cooking for supper because he could smell a delicious smell. And Simon thought as he opened the door that maybe he would go fishing again tomorrow after all. But not for a salmon. Hmm. <laughs> there he is fishing again. After all that wanting to get the salmon, why do you think he decided to let that salmon free back into the ocean instead of taking that salmon and taking it home and eating that salmon? <laughs>